film. Hey everyone, bless up. This is Karen at Shaman, and uh, this is day four of the rehab with uh, Legolas, and we are out here in nature. You can see me. I'm right off of sleeping on the floor. Didn't fix my hair or anything. <laughs> Pablo and Luna are out. We're out on the trail. A couple things I want to note. Um, on day one, there was intense, immense amount of baying. I put down an article, the difference between baying is baying is a domestication. It's an act where a dog is really crying out of anxiety, depression, um, stress. Uh, but it was bred in intentionally and with certain types of breeds um, so that they would make this kind of a sound that's very different from a howl. Now, I'm out here out in the woods and I'm going to turn the camera around in just a moment so right now you just see me but we're out here for at least an hour and a half and what you'll see on day four is you'll see that the spine of the animal is much more flat where before it was very arched up I don't care you can see I'm straight up bedhead right off the floor got them water got food going um, out here doing this this is an act or a gift of love for animals for my pack um, much as I have taken others out here on the trail and taught about footing and so on and so forth so we'll go into supplements here in a few days but right now what I'm doing is getting the lactic acid out of the muscles getting the excessive uric acid buildup out so that the spine is starting to level down so he's starting to get his footing so he starts to feel secure he still wants to uh, run back to the car when he sees the car and starts baying and getting very anxious and upset. So I'm going to uh, turn this around and show you the trail as we get walking. Bless up, Didi. There we go. Okay, so you should be able to see where I'm at right now. See, Pop? Let's go, guys. Even the little guy who's five pounds, which is Pablo here, and then there's Luna. Okay, and here we are out in the, the woods. Okay. Here's Legolas. He's still hobbling a little bit. I did give him a little bit of glucosamine and chondritin, but I have about four other supplements in mind. We're going to get uh, basic acidophilus today and, and get that going on a daily basis now that he's kind of purged a little bit through diarrhea. He's out uh, finding his own medicine and healing his mind by unwinding in nature. So uh, if you're an animal and you've spent a, a great amount of time indoors and uh, you connect with a human, if that human um, is not getting you outside, which happens with the majority of our dogs, then you're going to get a lot of pent up energy. So I just want to show you here with the little deal that you can see that his spine is much more level where it was really arched up kind of think like a, a scaredy cat see so he's got another you know chance here to unwind and stabilize his energy through nature uh, through the supplements uh, he's been on raw food he's been on uh, raw chicken carcass so that he can get those enzymes his teeth are really tartered up uh, he's been shaking his ears, so we're going to do some apple cider vinegar and water combination to, you know, help him to take down some of the bacteria. And his musculoskeletal system is still a little bit fragile. He'll be eight next month, or this month actually, by, you know, the closest standards. So, anyway, we'll keep walking. Just kind of give you guys a little idea. Uh, I know I look like Ms. Bedhead here, but uh, really don't want to get showered up and cleaned up. I'll do that after the walk here. Ready, Legless? So he's still limping a little bit, and what most people would do is they would uh, refrain from taking him out for fear that he would be in pain. I've got my vegan boots on here, if you can see, <laughs> right out of the right out of sleeping got up at about 6.30 and got out the door by, we got here at 
So um, I'm going to walk along the outer trail now. You can see Luna's all mudded up. Train tracks here. There we go. A lot of people talk about uh, medicine and rehabilitating animals and humans, but um, I just want to let you know that this is the real deal. The real deal is it's not about going to the animal shelter, although we're really thankful for them and putting them in a box and giving them a bowl of kibble every day. And again, we're very thankful for that. However, I've re rehabilitated probably close to 50 animals, mostly dogs, mostly big bully breeds breeds that a lot of people are sometimes kind of afraid to handle. And uh, it really is about packing them up. It's uncomfortable. It's an immense amount of work uh, because there's a lot of, you know, tension in the house as a new pack member is joining. But this is how you build strong animals and strong humans is to get out amongst the respiration of the trees get out and walk and move the pads of the feet so that you're stimulating your internal organs. So that's what we're doing. And nobody wants to come forth most of the time and do the promotion when it comes to, hey, uh, you did this because everyone wants to keep their shit private. They don't want to talk about the shit that they've created, inflicted, um, what they don't know. It's embarrassing. We don't like it. None of us like it. I don't like it. I have my own. But uh, we're not doing things right. And to do things right takes a hell of a lot of effort on the plantation today because everything is, is set up to not do it right with bags of kibble and veterinarians, animal shelters and dog trainers. No one wants to take home a totally muddy, you know, wolfy girl here. They don't want to do that. She knows how to clean herself. Pablo is out walking for an hour and a half set aside a budget. Uh, I would be out here for three hours, but other people got things they got to do. This is how you discharge a pent-up spirit. You discharge toxic energy, having been around toxic emotions in every single human home in the world today are toxic emotions, toxic food, toxic water, Number one healer is getting out into nature, okay? Bless up, Diane. Good to see you. I know you're a dog lover, too. If I don't uh, show you what I do and not be afraid of being real, yep, I didn't fix my hair. All I did was brush my teeth, get them more fresh filtered water in their bowl, get the uh, food started on the stove so they can eat when they get back. You don't want to feed a dog before you take them out too much because they could get some stomach torsion, twisted stomach. It's just not healthy, just like with us. You don't want to eat right before you go to bed. You don't want to eat right when you get up. Or you're asking for it. You're going to be full of mucus. So, here's Pobbers. And these guys over here, you can see how pretty, right? Come on, guys. Aaron is amazing. Just letting you know, there are lots of performers and entertainers out there. And it's not that I'm a big sourpuss. I'm just letting you know that the way that we heal each other, the way that we heal the world, is about being real. Yesterday, we had someone die next door, uh, doing a lot of sending love and blessings that direction. There's a lot of pain and grief and sorrow, as well as there is a lot of joy, beautiful happiness. But the elders are going to be the ones who are going to help you with real medicine. 
this animal, Legolas is his name, is going to be eight this month approximately, was adopted as a baby found in a box of puppies. And I'm quite sure, I feel pretty certain, that there was a high potential that he probably might not have been adopted out with the degree of anxiety that he had. His bones were very frail. He'd been fed a grocery store kibble. He'd been fully vaccinated up and chemical products put on him. And he had a lot of mental stress and tension from sitting around. That could be the description for a great many dogs and probably a great many homes. Not all. I know a lot of you really love love your canine companions. And it takes a lot of energy <laughs> to get up and take care of them because we're not living according to our nature. Our nature would be that we would get up and pack up and we would be growing our food and catching our rainwater. We'd have constructive shelters that did not have mortgages. We wouldn't be running to the ATM and the bank. We would be out walking. And the incidence of disease, sickness, and illness, and certainly toxicity, would be almost nil. Because we wouldn't have had the insertions of smallpox, chickenpox, limes, and everything else, which are massive tactical warfare. They're biological warfare. Okay. So when you get out, you clear your mind. They clear their mind. You get out amongst the trees, the birds, the squirrels. We've seen a duck and her babies. You know, and then I can start my day with a shower or a trip to the gym and a quick sauna. Go lay in there for about 10 minutes and heal myself. Uh, we're in a constant state of detoxification and healing due to what I talked about in my YouTube video on Naturally with Karen, the same live stream. Toxic brain, segment number one, mental and emotional health. So what do you do if you got to go to the bathroom? Well, I pull down my pants and I squat over here. Okay, that's what I do. Um, talking about when you've got to pee, when you got to urinate. What do we do now? We've got rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls of white bleached toilet paper. Hey, I didn't know all this stuff. I had to learn it too. But I began teaching it, taking others under my wing, because I had learned it. I had learned it from elders, mostly from people that were houseless. Get out and move your feet. Get your bowels moving. Get your bowel emptied. Get out and breathe. If you read those from the 17 and 1800s, a lot of you know about Professor Arnold Errett, who's another great, but there's many more. They said, if your lungs, bronchioles, are full of mucus and congestion, just like your thyroid, I talk about it in my book, you're going to have a situation of what? And I'm walking and holding the uh, phone, so again, I'm real. I don't have professional photographers out here. I have asked people, when your lungs are full of mucus, when you've been eating wheat, which just about every one of us has, the deep level bronchioles and the lungs are compromised. And when they're compromised, you can't take in and oxygenate your body fully. This is not rocket science. When that happens, the heart cannot conduct itself because the lungs are not fueling the body. So it dovetails and fits in directly with the concept of locomotion, which is go eat more food, you'll have more energy, which is actually wrong. It's been proven to be wrong. Eat more food, get more energy. Since we're all so mineral starved today and the, and the soil is so denatured, but the products that you're being sold are basing their nutritional composition on the soil of the 1950s. So if I build a product and sell it right now, and I'm putting uh, wheat flour and this and that, I've got my weapon with me here too under my arm. Um, you always want to make sure you do that if you're out in the woods, especially if you're by yourself. Um, the composition of, of ingredients of your product is sent into a company 
so that you can get a nutritional facts label and it's just based on the ingredients. They're not actually testing the actual product. So you need to know that. Bless up, Kim. So here's Legolas. Legolas is uh, a name after an elven character, I was told, off Lord of the Rings. So not a legless dog, but Legolas. And Pablo, who's been walking. This is our second round, taking a different route. And Luna whose original name is Luna Avalon. Avalon after the mist of Avalon that I read when I was pregnant with Zawa, the big thick book. Um, intentionally, because he was in my womb and I wanted him to have the, the ability to conceptualize magic. So it's important what you read while you're pregnant. If you want real medicine people, then you got to support them. If you want animals of high integrity, you want a strong pack, you got to build it and then you got to deal with what comes your way. Your pack may not be as stable as you think it's going to be. It takes time, a lot of energy, a lot of investment. It's not about, you know, farming people off. So you got to work every day selling their hours. So, you know, as I was telling uh, Anthony this morning, pretty soon you're going to have to pay to park to go into the grocery store to go pay to get your food that's held in hostage. That's important. So I'm getting out. I'm moving my feet. My feet are a little wet inside because my boots are kind of old. They're old vegan boots that I got at Kmart off a of clearance rack for $7.50. Luna, come on. Mama Duck's in there. We're going to stay out of there. <clears throat> Good job, Legless. And I thought, you know, what the heck? <laughs> I don't fix my hair. I'm going out on the trail. It started here at 7.06 this morning, this rise. For those of you that appreciate word sound. And I'm so thankful, it's June the 1st, that I have the ability to not be working two and three jobs right now as an elder medicine person shaman. To be able to be out here and help another being, Right? Uh, to have taken many, many younger people under my wing. And um, what I need is a strong forever pack. People that want to, uh, to build and get into a place where there's land, food, animals, a few guns. I'm not going to lie, we need to have that too in today's world. <laughs> I've got mine in my pocket because um, I protect my pack, period. Okay? But uh, when we picked up Legless, he was nonstop bang. And I was a little concerned about driving home because uh, a lot of experience with dogs uh, going towards the, the floorboard, towards your gas pedal. So I'm going to hand the phone to Anthony for a minute while I take a squat and pee. Karen has uh, helped me immensely with uh, many things, and uh, I encourage anyone who's looking for a real, authentic medicine woman in today's uh, day to, uh, to seek work with Karen. Because she has uh, not only reversed my lack of ease, she is now helping my beloved canine companion to reverse his lack of ease. And uh, I know she's going to help many, many more beings, humans, dogs. I've, I've witnessed her help birds, help cats. And help people she has no idea who they were. But uh, she's real, authentic, and uh, I encourage all of you to support her while she's here. Because it's a gift. And uh, I'm very thankful for her. A 
little snot rocket. Plug one nostril and give it some air. Where we're walking today is near the St. Louis River, which is uh, up here in northern Minnesota. It flows all the way to uh, Lake Superior, which, uh, through what I've learned from Karen, is, uh, is a powerful mother as well. And uh, it's very healing for me and uh, for her, and the dogs, and it's a luxury that uh, I'm very grateful for. Inside. So I'll let Anthony tell you about that in the heart, how the heart expands or gets bigger, based on the locomotion of the heart and the lungs. Um. Well, I, I'm, I don't have a really intimate understanding of the heart and lungs. I can speak from my experience. So when I first arrived, uh. Essentially, at Karen's doorstep, um, in need of serious detoxification for uh, a number of reasons, both mental and physical, um, what I found to be extremely healing was getting out in nature and moving uh, the toxic and stagnant energy. Um, yeah, there was there was a few occasions where I was uh, I didn't I wasn't really interested in the walk, but uh, Karen was very patient with me and uh, encouraged me to uh, get up and get moving. Um, and uh, through that, getting up and getting moving, in addition to caloric uh, restriction sleeping on the floor, um, I began um, excreting, I would say upwards of, what, 20 pounds of, of mucus through the, the se next several months. So I arrived in uh, March of, what was it, 2017? 2017. And uh, I was very strict, outside of a few instances where I, I got off the plant-based diet. Um, but for about four months, I was extremely strict, walking and moving with Karen. And uh, during that time, I did give her. I'm, 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 I'm a sensitive male. They are out there. Uh, but she did it out of love, so, it's all good, <laughs> but, um, I don't know, how, how much weight do you think? Because people like a number. Well, you're, I'm in the bathroom, I weigh down, like most people, or I'm about 200 pounds, which I definitely was. Let's turn around and go the other way, guys. So, and eventually, um, you were getting really bug bitten, and eventually that kind of got much less. It was frustrating and hard to feel at peace out here because the bugs bite because you learned why. And, uh, 
Anthony started to realize that this deep connection with nature and being out here and stimulating the pads of the feet is extremely healing. And he would go home as anyone would, as I did too. And, you know, a little bit of bug bitten here. <laughs> We're in Minnesota. And excrete, and excrete old, congested, toxic, compacted matter in the colon. So, um, this is something that's been my way since I was probably about 12 years old, was to get out in nature, breathe the plants. I've always kind of felt a little bit like Anastasia, meaning Anastasia and the ringing cedars. I've always thought very differently. I think it's always just destined to be a shaman and developed into a medicine woman. And I believe that a lot of us are. And I believe that a lot of you weren't really given good direction because your mothers were so compromised and disempowered and banded up and put into a sticks and brick house with an apron and all those things that I love. But we started to lose our ability to get out and connect out here and realize this, this is mama, okay? So um, a lot of young people, including a nature boy in the beginning and Anthony and Ox and on and on and I could keep going, dogs, because how could, I, how could I be a mother and not be interested in this? How could I be a shaman and not need to get my, my fix, which is to get out in nature? To help heal these animals and I've got lots of layers on so that you know I don't get as bit up because it's a little cool in the morning in Minnesota I didn't even fix my hair so this is you know right out of bed but I got this from the dollar store which is what I recommended for Kim you can stick it under your arm you can carry it if you need to kind of get yourself out of a jam it's a little mini crowbar from Dollar Tree and uh, we're gonna keep going I'm gonna show you how beautiful the trail is as I'm clearing out, because I went through the opioid, the heroin and fentanyl, horrible scare where I was sleeping an hour or two a night. That's why you see me about 35 pounds overweight, stress hormones of not sleeping, not eating the way I want, not taking all my supplements. My thyroid got inflamed again. My eyes got puffy. My throat is a little more raspy. <clears throat> I got mucus in my lungs. So I'm out here rebuilding and regenerating. And pulling that up, that's why I showed you, you put just like ujjayi breath in yoga. While you're out here walking and stimulating the pads of the feet, my boots are very, uh, you know, flexible. They're bendable. So I can take and put my finger on my nose, just like so. And mostly I blow from this nostril where the nose ring is. I pierce that side for a reason. And, and blow it out. Don't be afraid. Get out here and pee into nature rewild yourself learn how to thrive because the more of you that do this and the more of you that want to pack up with me the more of you that want to pack up with others who think this way come learn the medicine learn it through the videos or come learn it in person let's build the center so people have somewhere to go that's peaceful safe and offers the kind of plant-based nutrition not beans and rice not eat a whole chicken today not any of the gimmicks, not any of the fake mediums or any of that stuff, get with someone who's real, who says, no way, I've been up and I've been down. I've been up and I've been down. This is a plantation. You are going to be tested. You're going to be tested repeatedly. I had to bite Anthony probably three times in two years, meaning not physically bite him, but meaning I had to say, get your ass up. We're going for a walk one time, right? And I didn't even have to say it like that. I had to say, slow your roll down or something like that, right? Just like any other mother would do. Hey, a mother wolf would say what? Stop. Stop doing that. The plantation has you self-destructive, procrast every single one of us. Procrastinating, self-destructive, self-defeating, impulsive. So you're going to go out and grab that food. No, it's okay. You know, I'll, I'll get on the plant-based diet again tomorrow. But I learned again myself, and I'm 58 next month, that going through the heroin and the fentanyl with a close family member was so destabilizing. That's why it's number two in my plan. We get, I gather from years and decades and decades of helping people and animals heal. Stabilizing. I've got to gather first. So don't write me and say, 
should I take 10 more milligrams of uh, metformin or uh, phenylfluorazine or any of these? Don't tell me I've got blastomegacytosis. Because for me, the medical industry has nothing but massive amounts of Harry Potter diagnosis codes. I was speaking with Anthony this rise, walking out here on our first trip around, and I said, you know what? There is a virus, and that virus is primarily housed under domestication. So now we've got a five-pound chihuahua. We've got people that are so pasty they're afraid to go out in the sun. We've got doctors telling people to go get bottles of cold cruciferol, and they call it vitamin D. Vitamin D is not, it's a hormone. So the first day that I brought Legolas to the home where we all stay, we all live, right, in a sticks and brick home for now, I want to get mobile. I want to be able to keep Legolas in the pack and be able to feed four animals and go and give my talks and meet you individually and personally. I'm real. I don't have perfect teeth. I don't have perfect hair, but I know how to rebuild. I've done it. This is my fifth time, okay? When I first brought Legolas home, Luna was all over him because she's like, wait a minute, you're bringing someone into our pack, a being into our pack that has enormous unstable energy. And she's still not totally like, hey, I'm okay. I totally, can I just accept you unconditionally. Humans do that. Humans fake. They fake it. All the time, you have to go into a workplace, you need that check. So you go sit with people eight hours a day and you fake it that you all love each other, you like each other, you stay in superficial mode. That doesn't help us. You selling your hours to Super One and all these and all these places is never going to help us. It's helping you right now as you need to have a check but it's not going to help us, meaning it's not going to help the collective us, okay? What's going to help the collective us is getting a realization, getting an honest awareness that you're being farmed. And you're being farmed, and as people get really excited that a new mega hospital is coming into Duluth, and a new hospital is coming into Cloquet, and a new this and a new that, and I can't wait for the new Papa John's, and I can't wait for the new this and the new that, you are being owned by corporate, mega corporate structures. And they are learning how to market to you through algorithms on social media, like Facebook. So every time you big up Barbie with the Lumineers and the royalty and everything else, what you're doing is you're supporting the plantation farming you. They farm you because the minute you're born, they take your PKU, they do a heel stick and they get a little blood spot on a card and they categorize you. Your name goes on a birth surfer ticket, just like Prophet Bob Marley talked about, okay? We have elders, I have elders that I love. I'm under great stress. I keep saying, I know how to rehabilitate the dogs, the earth, I don't have all the pieces, I would never be that arrogant. But I have the medicine, I know how to, I know how to regenerate humans and dogs. I'm good at that. I have ideas about regenerating our planet, our people, our beings. Let's not wait till it's too late. So we're going to film a little bit more as I walk out. You can kind of come along with us. I did fix my hair here a little bit, so. The mosquitoes in Minnesota are a bit thick, so it's good to keep moving, especially while I'm detoxing. Again. Uh, sure. speak from my experience, uh, when I first started moving with Karen on these trails, my footing was rather unstable for a number of reasons. Uh, mental instability was a big part of it, um, as well as unstable energy, yes. And uh, 
I was all over the place when I was walking out here. I didn't, I didn't understand uh, how to move with an elder. Um, I was removed from my elders for many reasons, both my mother and father, at various times in my life. And uh, so I, I had to learn how to uh, move with an elder. And uh, so back to the original point. Um, if someone's footing out on these trails is somewhat unstable, tripping, tripping over logs like you're seeing now, um, then that likely means that your energy is unstable. And you're not present. You're not aware of your surroundings. You're uh, likely thinking about other things than what's right in front of you. So, after several years of moving with Karen, I find my footing to be much more stable. I'm grounded. I'm aware of my surroundings. I'm aware of where the dogs are. I'm aware of where Karen is. I'm aware of where I'm placing my feet each step. And uh, nature is beneficial for many reasons, but it can be used as a tool as well. If someone is unstable in nature, and they're most definitely unstable in what we call uh, society today. The concrete jungles of the world. So what is important, in my opinion, is uh, getting back to nature. Because that's how we heal. That's how I feel. That's how the dogs are healing. That's how Karen is healing. Getting back to nature is how we rise. And once that is understood by enough people, that's when we begin to become more powerful. And it's building. But uh, all of you on this live stream are crucial to uh, our success and we appreciate each and every one of you who are watching right now. And uh, we need your help and support because Karen is an amazing medicine woman and she has many, many more people like me to heal and help find their nature as well as many more canine companions out there. We've learned a little bit about omens too out in the field, in symbols. We talk about the bald eagles and What we see, the rocks that we saw today, and the symbols when you look down on the ground. And uh, I'd like we to talk a little bit about the fact that the waterways here have been identified that we had a clandestine meeting with uh, the EPA who talked about this being a mercury hotspot and knowing how we're losing the ability to have even swim spaces for the dogs to go. If the dogs got very sick from that. I mentioned that we're near the St. Louis River, which eventually flows to Lake Superior. Was it a, a year ago or two years ago? About a year ago, uh, we found the yeah the EPA here. Um, I think they were taking samples from the uh, the soil under the uh, the river, riverbed, I think that's the word I'm looking for. And uh, 
They were here for several days while we had the dogs out. And uh, Karen conversed with them and I overheard the conversation. And this is this area, specifically the St. Louis River, which is just after uh, uh, we are downstream from a, a paper mill. Um, it has been identified as one of the worst uh, mercury hotspots in North America. Not America, but North America. So, try to keep the dogs out of St. Louis River as much as possible because what happens is they start to break out in sores. And it's clear to me, clear to Karen, that it's extremely toxic. And what's unfortunate is St. Louis River flows into the largest freshwater lake, I believe, uh, in the world. Everyone's trying to buy right now for water. You pipe it down to Florida. So we have a river in which is identified as one of the worst mercury hotspots in North America flowing into, I would say, one of our greatest natural resources, which is Lake Superior. And uh, it's very concerning. We're gonna take you guys to a spot where I've taught some yoga, some African kinetic yoga. Anthony and I did a little bit of yoga on this little landing and we're gonna end there. But for one whole summer, our first summer, we got many of the courses done that are on my website, including, I don't know if you can see me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, including a major course called Crucial Keys for Unlocking Disease that you do at your own pace, you own it forever. And what it does is it teaches you the foundation, the direct application and the reasoning for why we're getting sick, why the body tenses and has oxygen deprivation from the thought, and why that's a huge part of the medicine that I want to talk about in the center. So for one summer, uh, we got out walking every day. We did yoga on this landing. And we went down to a little beach we're going to pass. And we picked up probably about what? How many bags of? Mm, uh, maybe 50, 100. Yeah, of, uh, we've got like three or four a day. Uh, taco vodka bottles, cigarette butts and everything on a beach, which now seems to be staying fairly clean. We'll see what happens this summer. But um, it starts with you, and it starts with us having areas like this that are growing rich with raspberries instead of city departments coming. And uh, a bear does shit in the woods. Okay. <laughs> Pick up the stock here. Um, instead of having sprays, and toxicity. See, an animal does this when they take a poop, they cover it up themselves. And because she eats real food, it composts into the ground. So uh, when we go to dog parks, we've got to take hideous plastic and put poop in the plastic and put it in the, the garbage receptacles. And we're not creating sustainability, okay? So that's why uh, when I go to my garden at Duluth Community Garden, we have a little garden at home, but the weather's been pretty flippy. Uh, thanks to geoengineering and changing things, cloud seeding and lithium and everything else in the environment. These are waterways where our people could be enjoying an amazing life. So one of the things I asked Anthony to do, which I think he'd probably done before he arrived, was just to watch Avatar from the perspective of seeing people cooperate, beings rather cooperate. You see the matrix so you understand what the plantation really is. Oh, check out the swans. <laughs> oh. Maybe we should go down there. I don't know. Maybe not. Let's take a look. Oh. You see them uh, oh. right between the trees. Oh. 
you may or not may or may not be able to see, but there are some uh, um, swans down there. But that is the St. Louis River that we were speaking about. And we're walking along. Yeah. So, on your walk, the first summer, we did a lot of picking up garbage, vodka bottles, syringes, matchbook covers, fast food uh, wrappers for sandwiches, um, pie boxes from McDonald's. Yesterday it was a big, huge Hennessy bottle and Subway wrappers and big uh, McDonald's French fry cardboard containers. I've been asking McDonald's for probably about 15 years why there's no receptacles for recycles. And um, when I spoke to a gentleman who's like a general manager from Palm Beach in Cloquet a couple months ago, he said that uh, they're phasing that in as a plan by 2020 or 2021. So I know a lot of you and a lot of my clients don't want to get on a video and I understand why because in my case my teeth have been drilled extensively from the age of 12 so sometimes after a lot of clenching and all the dental work that was done and all the dental work to get those silver amalgams out there's lots of times where I thought Anthony I'm not going to smile I don't want to look at the camera I feel so sensitive about my teeth. I just chopped off my dreadlocks. I feel like, oh, I feel butt ugly. Maybe I am on some level in terms of commercial standards of beauty. But what I have in my heart and what I have in my memory banks are absolutely something that we need. We need it in a center. We don't have that. As the hospitals are growing and we're so thankful for the trauma care, we're so thankful if you break a bone or, you know, whatever. We're not addressing, as I talk with people every single day, including a grieving mother yesterday who had her child removed to CPS, her little four-year-old daughter. I said, hey, it's all right, man. We got someone coming, so we're going to turn around and go the other direction. Yeah, they got turn a dog. Guy. There's another guy with the dog, so what we're doing is uh, we're changing and going the other direction. He's probably fine because his dog's off the leash. But what I find is that a lot of people, um, and I'm clearing my bronchial tubes, that's why I'm a little, still a little bit nasally and a little bit in here, is not everyone's totally comfortable with dogs, and that's the reason that I, uh, that I have this on the trail. <laughs> on the trail. Strapped okay. up. <laughs> And I have a conceal and carry permit, okay? Very, and I'm not foolish, and my mind legal. is present, so I'm not going to be a knee-jerk, impulsive person like I worry about a lot of people. But, um... And now he's baying, and what he's doing is saying... So I think we're going to try to walk past the guy since the dog's off the leash. But when I see other humans that have their dogs out in nature on a leash, and I understand why a lot of you are doing that, he wants to get back to the car and he's baying. Baying is not a howl, it's not a bark. It's how dogs have been domesticated to respond to people who see them as owning dogs to make a certain sound. But now that sound is made when there's anxiety, separation, different issues. So we're gonna walk past the man quickly and go to our landing spot where we'll end the video. When you eat wheat, when you get congested, the first place it's going to go on a woman is going to be the, the, the pear area. You're going to get a bigger backside and a bigger stomach, you know, here. Um, so you're walking and you're getting off a of wheat, you're going to take that weight off. It's going to also help to clear your bronchioles so you can pinch your nose, blow that stuff out. Them a Christmas tree, but they don't have 
humans and farm them into institutions that are starting to look more and more like penal or correction institutions. Instead, they begin to trust you and relax themselves and get stable energy. They know that they're going to get fed. They know they're going to have water. They know they can lay their head down when it gets dark because dogs are seriously connected to circadian rhythm, just like you are. But because you're given games and computers and screens with blue lights, because you're eating late at night, <laughs> you're getting distracted and you get that second wind after 10 o'clock at night that Ayurveda knows so much about. When we do Panchakarma, it's an Ayurvedic form of detoxification. I used to do a lot of Abhyanga and Sadhana, which is sweating, keeping the head out of the sweat canopy. Dogs have got to build trust not be trained. You don't get a dog by a dog. You adopt a being that ultimately we would eventually get with their own family so that mothers and babies can stay with their families. But if we continue down the road where we cover women up all the way up to their eyes, they can't go out without men. Don't see this as me hating you. See this as me bringing common sense. Use your heart and your mind together. And you can do that by decongesting yourself. Because as you do that, as was written in the 1700s and way beyond, you expand the heart instead of keep feeding the gut. So you buy. I didn't have to get up and put my makeup on and mascara and fix my hair because I'm gonna go home and shower and get myself together and feel good after I'm out in the woods and I refresh myself and cleanse myself. And any pack that I want that's a forever pack and the center that I want, that's what we're going to do with people, is rehabilitate them just like I'm doing with Lego. Just like I've done with about 50 animals. His spine is coming down, his coat is shedding all the, the undergrowth that's been trapped under there. His eyes are getting clear, his sclera was totally red. If you don't know what the sclera is, it's the white part of your eye and his eye. It was totally red, his eyes were starting to bulge. His tongue was hanging out, he bit me in the hand without drawing blood. 
but there was so much pent up unstable energy. Absolutely everything is energy. So my course, Crucial Keys to Unlocking Disease, on my website at naturallywithkaren.com, you own it forever. And it goes into what Sigmund Freud and many of the psychologists knew about psychosomatics, how to spot it, and exactly what the causatives are so you know where it's coming from in your mind and where it's going to be in your body. Whether you have an official disease or whatever you have, it's going to help you to identify so you can release it from your mind. You can't release disease without also doing, a lot of clients and their family thought, Karen's just visiting on this. Well, in a 45 minute session, some of it is getting to know you and developing ease. You have a lack of ease. We need to bring ease back in. We need to bring trust. We need to build trust. That's why we gather my plan, what I learned, my original way, as a medicine woman, as a shaman, gather, stabilize, detoxify, and you will heal. So we're going to keep going until we get to the landing, and then we're going to cut off. has been relaxing and I hope that coming on this walk with us if you're sitting in an apartment or a house right now maybe you're watching this video on YouTube at night that this is soothing for you that you're learning something that I've given you something something somewhere that will help you because as each one of you is helped we're helping the whole we're building what I've talked about for 25 years which is building a world family Connected brothers and sisters, not friends and acquaintances and co-workers, but brothers and sisters. Okay? Pack members first. If you don't know what a pack is, go to my YouTube video about what a pack is, and I'll give you some great insight. It's different than a gang, and it's different than a tribe. I'll let you go up ahead for just a minute, and I'm going to take a, a break. A squat. On our first round, we did uh, big containers of water with, I did supplements, I don't know about Anthony, probably did water, but not today. Just water today. Okay. So uh. a lot of letting that out, too, you gotta let that out. I mean, you're in nature, you can let it out and help you help yours with your, your year in nation. You're a nation. Don't let them fool you. Don't let them fool you. They don't confuse you. Luna's getting her minerals from the earth and the mud. video on YouTube called The Hysterical Uterus, you'll see 
two summers ago at Battle Creek Dog Park where Anthony is filming me, talking about the removal of cold mother and how we've destabilized women in part. You'll see my hair and you'll see when we become unstable, we pack on weight, right? We get mucus up, we're clearing our throat, our hair changes, all kinds, I cut my hair in this case, but you can rebuild. I don't care where you're starting from right now. You might have just had chemo, you might have had, you know, a glut of medications that are drugs. You might not have known. You start somewhere, you get out and you walk, you get your water for things. When you wake up, you don't go for the drinks from the convenience store. The bottled orange juices besides the cold press. You start somewhere. And you build. Step by step. Just like my book, you talk to me the sideways. Step by step. That it is. The man left in the Jeep. So. Here goes a deer. <laughs> a couple of deer, actually. Many omens. What was that? here, he at this moment wants to go back to the car, and uh, what we're doing is redirecting him this way, to stay with the pack, and let him know that he's cared for, and that uh, we're supporting him. And the same would be done with a new human pack member or a dog, a cat, whatever it may be. But it's important to uh, redirect the mind. Into uh, a, a positive mindset. And uh, that's what Karen is doing now. becomes anxious. When you know deep inside of yourself that things aren't right, you're not well within, one of the first red flags you're going to get is anxiety. You're going to wake up and you're going to feel down press, but you call it depression. It's like you call it a press a dent. You need to look at your word sound, your feelings. Your feelings are your emotions with a cognitive interpretation. Okay? Legolas is interpreting, I see the car, I know I've got to get in the car. Okay? There was a part of his life where he would be grabbed, and he's got a lot of anxiety about this is what comes 
when I've got to go get in the car. Someone gets very anxious when I've got to get in the car. So now getting in the car, he doesn't really want to get in the car. It's familiar to him that he needs to get in the car and he has no choice in the matter. So when he gets in the car, it's ah, 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 and that is what we call baying. That's not barking and it's not howling. When a human knows that they're sick, what's going on today is they're going to go out and just like when I got extremely stressed out, I wasn't sleeping, I was sleep deprived, stress hormones are flowing, I made the decision to cut my dreadlocks as a shaman, as a sacrifice to do that, to burn one in the fire, to regenerate my hair later, to let go of what no longer served me and to give and to ask to make a request for betterment for my pack. An alpha pack leader will bend over backwards in many, many ways to make sure her pack is okay or her, his pack is okay. It's not one or the other, okay? There's no sexism, racism, classism, genderism, abilityism, no ism schisms. But when we're put into an artificial plantation, the matrix, the beast, Babylon, that I was teaching Nature Boy about, that I've taught people about for 30 something years because I was taught about it in the 70s. I was taught the beginnings, the basics of word sound, about what Babylon is, about why you wanted to be natural. So I got rid of my television in 1984, the same year I paid Pamela Masters for raw foods for reversing cancer. And I would like to be able to expand this reality without the resistance of the trolls. No different than the meat having salmonella at one store so we can get everybody to go back to the other store in town, right? This manipulation of energy is a big facet, a big part of why we have unstable energy because everyone is wondering how they're going to get the resources, get the most resources, get the most freedom because of the illusion of scarcity and lack when in fact we can be up walking around, we can all pitch in together and have land as long as one or two or three people aren't trying to use people as utility in a selfish, unmanageable way, which is why I'm not going to follow younger people because it took me a long time to get my mind here, where it is which is unselfish. I still think about and love me and build daily habits, but it's unselfish. I'm rebuilding me now for the fifth time. This is why, you know, my, my backside's a little bit bigger and I want to get my hair together. But I'm not looking for money to buy lumineers. I'm not trying to pretend that my life is all absolutely perfect because it's not. I'm rebuilding me and I will show you as I go. I told you that by the end of May, I would have sleep and be somewhat regenerated and now I'm going to keep going and grow my hair very quickly. The gray hairs that I got from the stress are falling out. As you can see, it's mostly brown hair. Okay, <laughs> I'm almost 60. I'll be 58 next month. So I'll show you how to regenerate. We need to get people into centers so that you can start your own centers. So eventually the centers aren't run on money. The centers are run on human love and compassion and cooperation, not money. Doesn't mean that we don't have to have it. What I'm saying is for two to five years, we might. We might still have to have money. Yes, it's going to take money to get me in an RV, to go out and give live public talks, to be able to feed the dogs. But once we start to build and reforest and change the structure of the geometrics on the matrix that have been manipulated, all of the geo and the human engineering and the artificial intelligence, that's whack. That's going to take you to a place you don't want to be. So we're going to end over here and show you the river and the little place where we do the yoga. And uh, have a nice day for you once you get out of here.
come, we have, uh, you know, put our, our feet together and just enjoyed, bring our hands down. Salute the sun. I want to say thank you for joining me and Anthony. The pack. Zawa is at home. Luna. Pablo, who's chilling over here. <laughs> Getting their solar radiation, which is our food. Our food is not burgers. Our food is not barbecuing a steak. Our food is solar radiation and real air that used to be ether. You used to drink the air. You were drinking the air when you were inside a mama. You had an umbilical cord. And you were getting her exchange of fluids, but what you didn't know, that you're going to find out in the clean room, because I've settled on that name for almost 20 years now, is that Mama had been poisoned so that you would, on a multi-generational basis, end up in the situation that you're in, and you don't even know the situation you're in. I don't even know the full extent, but I know a lot, and I'm going to help you with that. Help me by supporting me, by subscribing to YouTube, by liking. I know you hear this from everyone. I'm here to give back. I'm here to give to myself, and I'm here to give to you, and I'm real. And I want to show you the medicine. I want to have the center so you have a place to come when you need it, or your mothers, your fathers, your grandparents, your children. We have an unstable environment right now for very good reason, and that is because it was intentionally placed that way. That's exactly it. This is my pajamas that I slept in last night with no bra. And I layered up, threw my hair up in a ponytail, threw my keys in a bag, I'm very thankful for it for Becca. I'm packing, I'm out here so I don't let myself get violated. Thank you so much for joining us. Make it a great day.